Hello, BookTube. I've got more mail, so I figured why not make it a five-video day? <laughs> they aren't all five-video days. I noticed uh, that by my calculations, there's no possible way, even at my rate of productivity, that I will reach the unbelievable landmark of 2,000 videos in 2018. I don't think that would be possible. As far as I've been able to just back of the envelope calculate it, I would need to do an average of six videos a day to reach it, and I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, we can still do five today. <laughs> Since there's more mail and it ends with a box, we might as well. Uh, who knows? Tomorrow might be no videos. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, let's forge right ahead. See what more damage we can do to the November shell. Uh, let's see here, Bean is off somewhere. It's a tiny little room. It's the size of a monk's cell, and it's covered in books. And yet she manages to find other places to be. She's off somewhere doing something. <laughs> Frida. Yes, there you are. Your fans like to see you, baby. Oh, <laughs> she's willing to bite but not jump. It's a little too late in the day, I think. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, this is first one. Oh, okay. Well, it's a November book. It's a pretty weighty subject, though. Uh... It's by W. Fitzhugh Brundage, and it's called Civilizing Torture, an American Tradition. Um, most Americans believe that a civilized state does not resort to torture, and yet, as the author reveals in this essential and disturbing study, there is a long American tradition of excusing as well as decrying its use. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> so, I automatically have to check. The author is... Uh, a professor of history at the University of Carolina at Cha North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and immediately have to check for President Taft and for the Philippines. And he's in here. <laughs> okay. All right. That's not good. All right. Uh, well, this is a study of the domestication of the idea of torture. How Americans are able to live with a split idea that uh, they don't do it while it still gets done in their name. <sighs> Important reading, but it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough to read, especially since if Taft is in the in, in the index, he's only there for one reason, and that's the the war in the Philippines. So, uh, water bear, waterboard, the uh, the birth, uh, the introduction to the Western mind frame of what we now call waterboarding. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, let's move on. That was a fairly grim start. So. No? No, baby's not interested. Well, all right, I'll show her to you when we're done. Uh, so what have we got here? Two books. <laughs> what is this? Uh, okay, New York University Press is... is They've given me one thing that looks perfectly ordinary and another thing that doesn't. Uh, let's see. This is the perfect ordinary thing. Pocahontas and the English Boys, Caught Between Cultures in Early Virginia. By Karen Wardell Cooperman. Uh, once again, with a faded sepia tone cover. Uh, the author is a silver professor of history emerita at New York University, and in this book she reveals the truth behind Pocahontas and her relationship with the Jamestown colony. Here, Cooperman tells the unknown account of how English colonists and local Native American tribes utilized the children living among them most notably Pocahontas, Thomas Savage, Henry Spellman, and Robert Poole, to foster alliances and ensure their survival in and around the Jamestown colony. Interesting. Interesting. Upon arriving at Jamestown, the ill-equipped English colonists quickly found themselves dependent on help from the local population, the Powhatans, in order to survive in their new home. The Powhatans found themselves in a similar situation, as the colonists had specific resources they lacked, such as axes, knives, and swords. These two peoples needed to find a way to work together peacefully, and that is where Pocahontas, Thomas, Henry, and Robert entered the story. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, all right. That's that's uh, comes out. This comes out uh, in March, and that explains the conventional one. But then, what is this? <laughs> what is this little thing? Relation of Virginia by the aforementioned Henry Spellman. Is this a reprint of his book? That would be incredible if it were. Let's see here. One, as one of the boys who played the crucial role in the inter as intermediary between Jamestown and the Powhatans, Henry Spellman's personal story is brought to life in his memoir. <laughs> Incredible. 
have their reprinted his memoir in a lovely little edition. Most of the accounts from this time period have typically been written by English adults and colored by distrust and fear of Native Americans. Conversely, Henry, who arrived in Jamestown at the age of 14 in 1609, was able to provide an unvarnished insider's account of Indian life, as well as insight into his experiences of being caught between two very different cultures. And it's edited and has a new introduction by our by our author, Karen Ordahl Kupperman. How incredible. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so this is going to be a 96 page hardcover coming out <laughs> in uh, in March alongside this book. That is great. <laughs> I tell you, I love my job. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, okay, that's great. Let's move on here. We've got a no we've got no bouncing bean today. She just uh, she was all for it earlier, but she's just not interested now. I think she is she is winding her way to sleep. Let's see if we can get a little life out of you. No. No, she is willing to attack the cardboard, but she is not willing to jump for it. <laughs> oh, oh, fantastic. Oh, great. This is perfectly timed. This is a November release. We saw the advanced copy, uh, and I need... This is the finished copy, and I really need it because I'm reviewing this book. Uh, and a finished copy of work of nonfiction always helps. Uh, so this... Okay, you've got... Okay, I've got lots and lots of stuff. You're telling me lots and lots of things. But all right, so mid-November. Great. All right, that's just about right. This is uh, Jack Miles' God in the Koran, the finished copy of God in the Koran. And it's made to look exactly like uh, what it is, the uh, sort of a companion volume to his book, God, a biography, and uh, Jesus, a crisis in the life of God, His two, the two previous volumes in which he did this sort of thing, where he reads... Um, in the first two cases, the primary, the two primary works of the Abrahamic religions, as though they were straightforward fictional narratives, and describes what's going on in the life of the characters, specifically the character of the life of God. And here he is taking the rather perilous step of extending that methodology to the Quran. And we shall see. Uh, I have I have uh, read and taken notes on the advanced copy. We. Gotta tell you, even at this late date, I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna craft my review. We shall see how I do it, but I. It's gonna be a tricky review to, to craft. It's a tricky book to review, and I wanna do it justice because I love this author's work. Uh, so I'm glad to have a finished copy because I was getting a little tick of, uh, of futzing back and forth <laughs> trying to find things in the advanced copy. Uh, wonderful. Okay, that's very good and very useful. All right, and then we have uh, this next one. Uh, what is this? Okay, uh, this comes out in March as well, so uh, I did not request it, but uh, it looks good. This is by Mallory O'Meara, and it is The Lady from the Black Lagoon, Hollywood Monsters, and the Lost Legacy of Millicent Patrick. Uh, this, thank God, is not what it's going to look like. <laughs> it, it apparently is going to look like that. Uh, but let, let's see what we have here. This is going to be a tale of old Hollywood, I bet. Uh, this is from, for screenwriter and genre film producer Mallory O'Meara. Her first viewing of The Creature from the Black Lagoon kindled an obsession. <laughs> That's true for a lot of us. Uh, she is far from alone in her admiration of this fan favorite. Auteur, not me, the publicist is actually using that word, Auteur Guillermo del Tomo uh, has, re has acknowledged it as an influence on the shape of water. Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water. Any of you see that? The Shape of Water. Uh, it was a bit disturbing. <laughs> uh, his 2017 Academy Award winner. But for Mallory, the real aha moment came when she found out that a woman named Millicent Patrick had been the mastermind behind the titular character. Fueled by insatiable curiosity and emotional investment, uh, Mallory embarked on a quest to learn everything she could about Millicent Patrick. And this book is the result. Uh, wow. Wow. Okay, in, in this resonant, voice-driven narrative, Mallory blends her twist-filled search for the elusive Millicent, one of Disney's first female animators, and the only woman to create one of Hollywood's classic movie monsters, uh, with a thoughtful reflection of her own challenges in the same sexist industry more than 60 years later. Hmm, okay, so this is Millicent Patrick's story. All right, great. Uh, 
a little bit of movie history. All right, so that comes out in March. So we have a few things from March, and now we'll finish up with the box, and then we'll we'll be done with I promise our last video of the day. <laughs> so, what is this? Uh, this this is, once again, it's a little box, but once again, it's from Norton, one of my favorite publishers. Let's see what we have here. You want this, baby? Well, you do. You want it, but uh, ah, okay. All right, this is this comes out on December first. It's basically a November release, and it's uh, something I don't think I ever got the advance copy for. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay, this is uh, by Ray Connolly, and this is Being John Lennon. The finished copy of Being John Lennon. What was it like to be John Lennon? Uh, constantly yearning for tobacco hit. It was a big part of it. <laughs> 70 or 80 times every single day of his entire life. Day in and day out. Night in and night out. Before and after meals. During conversations. At all times. All through recording sessions. 70 or 80 times every single day. His addiction forced him to move. To do something. To interrupt what he was doing in order to satisfy it. 70 or 80 times a day. Since it's astonishing that, well, anyway, <laughs> that's not what the author is asking, I'm sure. What was it like to be a cast-off child, the clown at school, and the middle-class suburban boy who pretended to be a working-class hero? How much did it feel, how did it feel to have one of the most recognizable singing voices in the world, but to dislike it so much he always wanted to disguise it? Uh, and in this book, uh, this book is not about the whitewashed Prince of Peace of the Imagine legend. Because that was only a small part of John Lennon. The John Lennon depicted in these pages is a much more kaleidoscopic figure, sometimes almost a collision of different characters. Interesting. Okay. And, uh, and didn't, this comes out on December 1st, didn't, didn't Ray Connolly do another book like this? Didn't he do this already? Uh, he has published a number of books, including okay, including Being Elvis. Okay, so he did he did Being Elvis. He did an, uh, along the same lines, uh, and he lives in London. Okay, great. Uh, so that I'm not I'm not the world's biggest. I know this is complete heresy, but I'm not the world's biggest Beatles fan. Uh, but I'm glad I'll gladly read this absolutely. And if one of you is an infinitely bigger Beatles fan, somebody who who, who saw this book and squealed where I noticeably did not. Let me know, because when I'm done with it, you're welcome to it. Uh, so, so that is our uh, our mail for today. We have Being John Lennon, uh, which is coming up on the 1st of December. We have The Lady from the Black Lagoon, uh, digging into the history of The Creature from the Black Lagoon, coming out in March. Then also in March, we have Pocahontas and the English Boys, uh, and Relation of Virginia by Henry Spellman, who was one of the English Boys. <laughs> Incredible. They're reprinting it. The scholarly introduction and new notes and everything. That's wonderful. Then God in the Koran by Jack Miles. I really cannot recommend his book God, a biography, highly enough. I really cannot. No matter where you stand on religion, whether you believe or not, I really cannot recommend it strongly enough. Uh, and the last one is uh, Civilizing Torture. Uh, an American tradition. That subtitle is meant to be disturbing. I, it certainly is. So uh, so that is our, uh, our second mail of the day. Let's get you your... Your bean. There she is. There she is. Oh. <laughs> Look at them all for you. Oh. oh. She makes that piggy uh, snorting noise when she's tired. When she's getting tired, she starts going... She starts huffing a little when she's breathing. She's, been, she's done that since she was a tiny little puppy. That's my sign that I know. Because she her energy will keep her on her feet and thrashing around endlessly. But she gives off that sign involuntarily. That's when I know that she's getting tired. That and also the uh, the the Otto von Bismarck eyebrows start to droop a little until finally uh, until finally when she's really tired, her eyes are completely hidden. <laughs> but the huffing sound that that she's been doing since she was a tiny little speck of a puppy. Uh, that is my surefire sign that it, that baby is almost ready to go to bed. <laughs> but anyway, I'll wrap this up for now. Uh, but I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Book Two.